Stu, if we, if we have a, a quick conversation about things to do to prepare for a telemedicine visit, that might help some folks out. Absolutely. Uh, Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel. And make sure to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. What follows is an excerpt from a recent discussion that Stu from MS News and Views and I had about how to prepare for a telemedicine visit. Stu, so if, if we have a, a quick conversation about things to do to prepare for a telemedicine visit, that might help some folks out. Um, you know, obviously a couple things is if you're going to be using your smartphone, make sure that it's charged or plugged in. If you're going to be using your laptop or your iPad, same thing. You want to make sure that it's set up. Um, a second thing is you want to make sure that it's stable. I have some patients, they're holding their camera while they're talking to me. The problem is I need them to move their hands around and stuff. So coming up with a, a stationary a device to hold it in place is important. You, you wanna make sure that you have good lighting uh, so that I can see you and you can see me and you wanna make sure that you're not gonna be interrupted. So I've done a couple telemedicine visits where I've got a couple dogs and a couple kids and a, and a husband running around in the background and that's not bad, but I think it makes it harder to communicate. So kind of, you know, parsing out a quiet room or some quiet time. I've actually had some patients uh, do telemedicine from their car because it was the only place that they could escape from their family since they're all quarantined together. Uh, fascinating, but, but it worked very, very well. They were in the privacy of their car. They set their iPhone up on their dashboard and we did an entire visit and really gamed out a lot of stuff. It's hard to do a standing exercise though when you're in the car. Yeah, that's a little tough. You know, you might hit your head, particularly if you're real tall like you and I. Um, you know, another thing that you want to do is it's a good idea to have all of your medicines near you. So the bottles of medicine, in case we have to look up the pharmacy number or in case we have to look up the, the medicine to see if it needs refilled. So bringing your bag of medicines or your just your list of medicines uh, to the room where you're going to be talking. Similarly, having your notes you know, kind of like, kind of like you did, you know, you exactly, you prep notes, you know, MS Views and News has a, a printable sheet that you guys make available for patients. Having someone print that off and fill it out and have their notes ready when they talk to the doctor is really a very, very important idea. That way you're not going to forget something that you want to bring up. Um, it, having enough space that you can stand up um, you know, if we're going to be moving around, I, I think there's a lot that we can do watching someone walk on camera. And so, you know, if, if we're going to be doing that, having enough room that you can get up and move around, I think is a really good idea. And wearing clothes that allow you to do that. If you're in really constrictive clothing, um, you know, it's going to make it a bit more challenging. You want to wear comfortable clothes that allow you to move around freely. Other things that you might think about um, as we've been doing this, which would assist someone in preparing for a telemedicine visit? Yeah, so if they rely on a care partner to be there to have information that can be beneficial to that meeting as well, I mean, there's obviously, including myself, which is why I learned to make notes, um, cognitive issues, all right? Um, so long ago, I learned to make all the notes because I got these memory issues and uh, but for those, though, that prefer to have their care partner with them to remember, you know, or to have their own lists or their own ideas of what they could bring to that meeting and learn from that meeting with the doctor would be awesome as well. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and one of the, the cool features is that we can have more than one person on the call. And so I've done several telemedicine visits where the, the care partner wasn't at home. They were somewhere else or the brother uh, from another state or the daughter from another city wanted to participate. Um, and under normal circumstances, maybe everyone would travel to the clinic and we would have a, um, a visit with, the, with all of the village members. Here you can recreate that because they can join the Zoom call. 
And so, you know, you can do multiple different windows, you know, right now, just to show people, we, can, we have two windows open, but we could have four or five, you know, where we could have uh, team members or village members on camera with us who can provide more input, which I think is, you know, kind of slick. My name is Aaron Boster, and I want to thank you for learning about MS with me. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I have a question for you. What do you think of the concept of telemedicine? Would you consider doing a telemedicine visit for your chronic condition? Please leave your answer in the comments section below, and I eagerly await reading them. If you have already done a telemedicine visit, please kindly share with us in the comments what your experience has been like. I know that my viewers and myself would love to learn from you what your experience was like, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you in clinic, whether that be face-to-face -face or on camera, this is Aaron Boster saying be healthy and take care.